Is it possible to actually treat hair loss with stem cell therapy? In this video, we're gonna talk about three things. Number one, what are stem cells and how do they work? Two, is it actually treating hair loss? And three, how does it compare to already traditional methods like an FUE, transplant, Propecia, Finasteride, and other herbal supplements? Hint, some of these may be a little outdated. Number one, what are stem cells and how do they work? Stem cells is a very broad range term and many people are throwing the word stem cells around a lot out there. And so there's different types. There's progenitor fetal stem cells, which can become any stem cell. And then there's things that are more likely considered adult stem cells which is really where most of the research is being focused, particularly on the mesenchymal or MSC line, which is really prevalent being discussed a lot out there. And so the way these cells typically are working, what we're seeing in the research, is that they're able to go and signal or recruit other factors to help stimulate regrowth, regenesis, and repair. And that's how scientists believe that they may work, particularly when it comes to areas of decreased blood flow, they may be producing something called VEGF, or vasoendothelial growth factor, which actually leads to more blood vessel growth and further nourishment of a damaged area. Number two, are stem cells actually effective for hair loss and hair treatment? So before we talk about that, why do people lose their hair in the first place? The honest answer is it's a number of reasons from diet, genetic, endocrinological, or hormones, and many other factors. However, all these kind of centralize around a single theme, which is compromising the blood flow and health of the follicle itself, the follicle being the main cell or the unit that's producing the hair shaft and giving you hair. And so if we know that the blood vessel component is a significant part of this, what happens in a lot of these different pathophysiologies or the injuries is the blood vessel supply system being very tiny in the scalp gets inflamed, compromised, and even dies. And as you kind of squeeze off and choke off this blood supply, what you're gonna see is whatever it's connected to and the scalp being a follicle is going to also wither away and essentially die. Whereas with stem cell and exosome therapy, uh, one of the things that's been researched and shown in a number of studies is its ability to enhance growth of blood vessels. And again, while it's still experimental, this is something that's been seen in a few studies and it just so happens to be one of the main reasons why hair loss is so prevalent. Are stem cells actually effective for hair loss and hair treatment? Well, the fact is, a ton of celebrities have been using stem cell therapy, both alone and combined with traditional treatments to help improve their hair loss. And some of the results have been incredibly profound. I was patient zero for this treatment about seven years ago when I piloted using this for my own hair loss. And you, know, you can see some of the photos of me, it's pretty bad, I'm pretty bald, and definitely didn't have the highest confidence. It's begun to become more popular because it's minimally invasive and it can be done in a single session. And usually it's not something you need to do over and over again, in my experience, where some of these medications and pills and supplements you have to take once or multiple times a day. And last but not least, number three, what makes it different than treatments like FUEs, surgical transplants, medications like minoxidil or finasteride, even herbal supplements and lasers? The main thing to realize is that some of these therapies have been used for quite some time. And some may be gimmicks, which are marketing schemes to get you to spend money, and others may be effective. Now, to talk about medications like minoxidil and finasteride, they tend to actually have some effect to help you grow hair, but you need to take them long-term. And after taking them long-term, they may not have the same effect and you have to maintain a regular regimen with them. In fact, in my particular case, I got so tired of taking minoxidil that I just decided to stop and that's when all my shedding happened right away. And for me, that's been a common experience with a lot of people who decide to stop taking a medication abruptly for hair loss. Um, the other ones like surgeries and FUEs, the, the old strip procedure where they use a scalpel or like surgery to change your hair is leaves a horrible scar and it's not something I really recommend for patients because you can't go back from it once you've had that scar. Now the FUE or the microsurgical approach is actually something we use and in some cases it's beneficial to use for example someone who's shiny bald but another thing to know is that when you're doing this FUE treatment or microsurgical treatment that's really new and advanced We've had patients come just after three years and spending $20,000 um, with their hair falling out already. And so the reason being is the reason we talked about before. If your blood vessel system is compromised or you don't have really a healthy scalp, even if you transplant these new follicles, they may not last the way you need them to last. And so it's our belief, and I think what we'll see in the future is that combining stem cell exome therapy with an FUE for patients who need it is just incredibly more impactful. And the other stuff is gonna to tend to be a little bit more outdated. There's also something called cloning that's coming in the future. 
it's not here yet, but it's something we're all incredibly interested in and something we have been looking at super closely. So that's all I can cover in this short video. If you'd like to see a step-by-step -step description of how exactly this works, click the first link in the description down below. Also, there's another video on screen, which you can check out if you'd like.